Now on BBC One, this week's Inside Out with Jamie Coulson. Hello and welcome to Inside Out from Moulton in North Yorkshire. This week on Inside Out, how safe are our skies? We investigate failings in private helicopter training. Tonight, we can reveal police are investigating a crash which killed two people in North Yorkshire. To think that someone sadly crashed and died, um, yeah, it was a, it was a very uh, horrible experience. Now, status symbols don't come any more impressive than owning your own helicopter, but how good is some of the training for private pilots? An inside-out investigation into the deaths of two people at Rudding Park near Harrogate last year has found some frightening loopholes in the system, and the police are now investigating the crash. Two years ago, a Gazelle helicopter crashed in the grounds of a luxury hotel in North Yorkshire. The pilot and his passenger, a husband and wife, were both killed. It wasn't just a tragic accident, it's a warning about what can go wrong when wealthy pilots start flying their own helicopters. The Gazelle helicopters, like a Ferrari or an Aston Martin of the sky, they're high performance, highly manoeuvrable, um, fantastic things to fly in. <laughs> Now this is a nice car. But would you feel safe if a newly qualified driver took it out for a spin? This is its equivalent in the sky, the Gazelle helicopter, and it'll cost you around £300,000. This is a big boy's toy for the seriously wealthy, but you have to treat it with respect. Flying your own helicopter can be a dangerous pastime. If you crash, you'll probably die, and people on the ground could get killed too. It doesn't matter how rich you are, you've got to be properly trained and licensed to fly. In West Yorkshire, Paul and Linda Spencer ran a successful business importing flowers. They'd made millions. Two years ago, some of that money was spent on a gazelle helicopter. In January last year, Paul Spencer took delivery of his helicopter at this airfield near Romford. It had celebrity history. One previous owner was the pop idol judge, Neil Fox. They are amazing to fly. They're fast, nimble. They're quite slippery, sporty, quite twitchy. But at the same time, you know, um, strong and they're, and they're an amazing pilot's machine. For someone who's at the start of their flying career as such, how would you describe it as a helicopter for them? Well, I would think the only thing I can liken it to is, you know, I would you'd probably prefer to learn how to drive a car on a Micra and then sort of build up to something a bit faster and end up with your Porsche or your Ferrari at the end. You wouldn't probably learn on one. Paul Spencer flew his new helicopter 200 miles north to the Rudding Park Hotel near Harrogate, where he was meeting his wife, Linda. He took her for a short flight over North Yorkshire. But when he tried to land again at the hotel, he ran into disaster. The helicopter crashed. Within hours of getting his gazelle and only a month after he'd passed his helicopter pilot's test, Paul Spencer and his wife were both dead. Now, nearly two years after the crash, there's new evidence about how Paul and Linda Spencer died. We've got the details of the official report into the accident. The precise cause is still unknown, but it's thought that high winds were a factor. The report also raises questions about Paul Spencer's training. There's already evidence that the rules for helicopter pilots have loopholes. When World Rally champion Colin McRae died three years ago in a helicopter crash, killing three other passengers, including his five-year-old son, he was still flying, even though his licence had expired two years earlier. Gazelles won their reputation as high-performance military helicopters, where they were flown by pilots who undergo some of the world's most rigorous flight training. 
Whenever you're flying a helicopter, there's no margin for error. Training in the UK is controlled by the Civil Aviation Authority. There are strict rules about civilian helicopter training. Your instruction and flights need to be properly logged and you need to fly from a licensed airfield, like this one at Sherbin in Elmet. But enforcement across the country isn't easy. Sometimes shortcomings are only discovered after a helicopter has crashed. The course is laid down, a minimum of 45 hours instruction, which is a bare minimum and the academic qualifications have to be studied for. There are no shortcuts. Paul Spencer knew about flying. When he was younger, he trained as a commercial aeroplane pilot. But investigators found deficiencies in the record of his training. The evidence also raises questions about whether helicopter training should be more tightly controlled. Details of Paul Spencer's training were difficult to verify. His instructor, Ian King, is an experienced pilot, seen here in the 1990s when he used to fly the Lincolnshire Air Ambulance. A lady has an aneurysm and she needs transferring from Maplethorpe to, to Lincoln County Hospital. But at Leeds Magistrates Court in May this year, Ian King was convicted of failing to produce Paul Spencer's training log when required. Without this kind of documentary evidence, investigators couldn't assess how good Mr Spencer's training was. The prosecution was brought by the Civil Aviation Authority after Ian King said the log had been lost. It's a very minor offence and really, it, I'll say, it isn't worth the money that they're going through the effort of um, trying to pursue it. I mean, it certainly isn't. It has no implications to flight safety. It has no implications to, towards aviation, really. It's a very small matter. Since the court hearing, Ian King has declined to talk to us on camera. He said Paul Spencer's training had been good and was properly done, although there were errors in the recording of it. Accident investigators believe Paul Spencer's training flights took off from here at Breton near Selby. Breton is a quiet country airfield, so secluded that Cold War nuclear missiles used to be stored here. But it's not licensed for pilot training. Having instruction from here would be illegal and potentially unsafe because of the lack of emergency response equipment and supervision. Breton airfields say they're a private airstrip and don't provide any training. They don't know the detailed activities of airfield users. If, as accident investigators believe, Paul Spencer was trained here, was it a suitable place for instruction? And how well prepared was he to fly a gazelle? According to the records which could be found, Paul Spencer's instruction was supposed to have been from Beverley, an airfield 25 miles from Breton, which is licensed for training. But when investigators checked at Beverley, they couldn't find any documentary evidence to confirm he'd been there. Beverley Airfield told us users were supposed to sign in and no irregularities would ever knowingly be allowed. At the time of the Gazelle crash, there were strong winds at Reading Park, so strong that most pilots would have decided not to fly. The likely causes are that the weather conditions were more than he could cope with with his inexperience and that the wind was a factor. Gazelles have a reputation for being difficult to fly, especially when it's windy. In Gloucestershire, two people were seriously hurt after crashing their gazelle into the roof of their house while trying to land. It's an issue which would be expected to be covered in training. The problems with an individual helicopter, probably problems is the, the um, wrong word, but idiosyncrasies of an individual helicopter will have been explained to you in training and you will have practiced this sort of thing on several occasions. So when you get to flying it on your own with your license, you'll be aware of all these problems. It's likely that Paul and Linda Spencer died because of pilot error in difficult weather conditions. The accident report, when it's officially published, will also call for tougher policing of helicopter training. I had some of the best times in my life in that machine. And I think when, when I know exactly what it looked like, what it felt like to fly and, you know, how much fun I'd had in it, to think that someone actually in that exactly that same environment had sadly crashed and died, um, yeah, it was a, it was a very uh, horrible experience, actually. And then, I, of course, I suddenly feel you feel for their family and everyone, all their friends around them, um, because it was a real tragedy. This is the whole reason why accidents are investigated so that if there is any shortcoming, 
it can be identified and it can be rectified so that that same accident will hopefully not happen again. The evidence suggests that the crash at Rudding Park, which killed Paul and Linda Spencer, was an avoidable tragedy. North Yorkshire Police have launched a joint inquiry with the Civil Aviation Authority into the circumstances of their deaths and into Mr Spencer's training. If the lessons are learnt, it should ensure tighter controls, and that means more safety for all of us. Thank you.